48 seconds of logos for a goddamn mainstream comedy with two huge stars. You had to get multiple production companies together to get this shit made? I've always wanted to be a dad. Man, I'm sure glad this wacky comedy about a family conflict starts out with some helpful narration, because otherwise I'd be fing lost. And I love my Ford Flex. Jesus Christ, movie waits 1 minute 13 seconds before sucking a product placement dick, and it deep throats that shit. Don't be tickling or nothing. Oh, I love how you drew my hair. That's poop. And I'm guessing it's dog poop? That's homeless man poop. Movie restrains itself for almost two and a half minutes before finally releasing its first poop reference. I hope it didn't pop a blood vessel. You can find the good in just about anything. Sarah accidentally explains why Will Ferrell signed on for this movie. I know this is supposed to show how much these kids hate Brad, but shouldn't someone at the school have noticed this pathological behavior? It's not like they're just showing him dead. There's a disturbing variety in how he dies. Oh, is that weird? First ever stepfather and son talk, and this guy has to ask if taking a picture mid-talk is weird. You know, movie, there are ways to play the not used to being a father angle without veering into not used to being human territory. Daddy! Hi! Brad's registering shock. Not that Dusty's calling, but that this house still has a landline in 2015. Okay, uh, yeah, my credit score is 752. What? I'm sorry? What sort of fighting styles am I proficient in? Sure, this is played for laughs, but what do either of these things have to do with the other? Does Dusty want to fight Brad or steal his identity? He's wild and he's crazy. Then you end up with two kids. You know, I'm stuck there holding the bag and he's nowhere to be found. And Sarah waited to give Brad this very basic information until just this moment. 103.6. How did this asshole ever get past the initial audition phase? Hey, you Dusty? I know Dusty is attractive and sh but there are dozens of people walking around here. Why does Brad know immediately that it's him? And a Kawasaki, Kawasaki 9. Even the stepkids should be calling him out on this bullshit. But the movie needs it to lead into... You should get on her, man. Come on. A hilarious action sequence later, so no one says anything. Holy sh Even for a Lakers fan, this is overkill. Erwin Fletcher didn't even have this much swag. The king messed up. He messed up bad. Movie expects me to believe that in a house this large, the boy and girl children have to share a bedroom. It makes for neat conversations like this, but isn't at all the way this family's bedroom layout would unfold. I guess they're squeezing both kids into a single bedroom so they can use the other four bedrooms in the house for sh like man caves and scrapbooking rooms. This family apparently recreated the Nirvana Nevermind cover with one of their kids one day at a pool. You have no idea who you're dancing with. Dusty gets into your head, that's what he does. Man, this movie sure does set Sarah up to be a wet blanket. With the sight of emasculation, a peppering of nagitude, and a soup of unhelpfulness. It's so refreshing to see a woman written in such a nuanced way. <laughs> Comedies rely on stretching the believable to unbelievable places. A new stepdad that wants to do right by his stepkids and their father? Believable. That father moving in and getting the kids a dog but still being accepted by the stepdad? Unbelievable. This movie dances all over that line so much you'll give up and just accept anything eventually. <laughs> Oh, I'm going to leave this one up to Brad. The more I watch this movie, the more I'm convinced that Sarah's the primary antagonist, because she does nothing but exacerbate the situation. Besides, you know what happens to old dogs at shelters? He's going to have to walk the green mile as soon as he gets there. No, Brad, no, don't kill our dog! I hate you! How the f*** do these kids know what the green mile is? It's my party! Oh, my God. Goddamn, considering how early the first poop joke came in, I guess it's a minor miracle that we've lasted this long until the second one. Hey, it's okay, Brad. Look, she's a lot of bike, man. Why don't you go back in and take that shower so you can get a shirt on? Mark Wahlberg's in terrific shape in his mid-40s here, but do we have to get a reference to him not wearing a shirt in every f***ing comedy he's in? See, this is only funny on SNL or some sh This movie has so far presented itself as part of reality, and this embedding of a person through a wall is more indicative of cartoon violence. This vehicle takes the kids to school and other sh without being pulled over by the cops for being half-smashed and not roadworthy. 103.6 The Panda! Damn it! This movie's trying to rockstar me into thinking Mark Wahlberg can actually sing, when I know from the Funky Bunch days that he definitely cannot. Perfect time and listen to this! I worked in radio for years. There's no way this f***er would be hired for his jingle singing and said jingle would be recorded, mixed, produced, and start airing that day. The paperwork alone would take a week and a half. Uh, he already started and I, I just think it's... it feels wrong. Why, because he's black? Well, yes, that is what he means. But how do you know that guy's black? You literally just walked in and the dude is already back in the room working upstairs. Please, allow me to pay you for your time and travel. Don't do me any favors, Paula D. Wow, what an incredibly general reference that I'm positive will stand the test of time. To buy all the gear we need would cost more than just hiring somebody off of Angie's list. Hmm, definite Angie's list product placement here. But it just feels weird not to mention Craig and his list as well. And the king, he thought the Steph King seemed okay at first. A little soft, maybe. This kind of sh is all the movie has going for it. Literally. Take turns trying to convince the kids which dad is best. Super original. Such creativity. Honey, what's the matter? Seriously, the only character traits listed for Sarah must have been clueless, oblivious, and birth two children. I know Brad's trying to show Dusty up here, but where the hell are the actual aquarium guides for the field trip? And when has any presentation ever elicited spontaneous applause from elementary school students? 
Come the f*** on. Brad could have moved one f***ing step to the left or right to avoid this cheap gag. It's jokes like this that made the movie-going public firmly reject this stupid garbage and ensure there would definitely never be a sequel. I've seriously seen better CGI on Saturday morning shows on the Christian Broadcasting Network. Okay, so his skateboard is so old it has dust on it. Gotcha. But he's supposed to be a relatively recent stepdad. He would have moved that old-ass skateboard into the closet, what, eight months ago? What the f***ing f***? Okay, I guess we should all selectively turn our brains off and laugh hysterically when something magical happens in this otherwise reality-based comedy. Yep, they can afford a house this nice in this neighborhood, which surely has HOA rules about smashed SUVs in the driveway, but they cannot afford to fix the SUV. I always had to be the bad guy mom giving out the carrots and the punishments. Wait, carrots aren't punishments? Didn't she mean handing out the carrots as the punishments? Why does this household keep eggs in the fridge in two different spots? And why do they refrigerate these four Hormel microwavable meals? Check your history books, buddy. Almost everything is solved by violence. Now Sarah's just outright agreeing with everything her ex-husband says, in addition to being totally unhelpful to her new husband. Jesus. Not to mention how wrong the thing she's casually agreeing with is. If I had a dad like Dusty when I was your age, maybe he could have taught me how to stand up for myself. This line caused John Lithgow to immediately jump up from his couch and submit his name for the sequel in order to defend Brad's father's honor. Dr. Emilio Francisco? You heard of him? Oh my god, yeah? He's been on Dr. Oz like ten times! In a world where Dr. Phil and Dr. Oz are treated as factual as a textbook. We could just try, right? It can't hurt. Sarah becomes immediately f***ing baby crazy at the first mention of the fertility doctor, even though she's done very little parenting in this movie. What is it with this f***ing character? What the f*** is he wearing right now? A lounge chair design accidentally printed onto a shirt? A combination shirt condom? A Jeremy Scott design eaten and vomited out by Barney? Also, the Bud Light is strong with this scene. Oh wow, apparently this movie's set in New Orleans, which you could totally tell by the cultural diversity and vibrant environment. Hey, Dusty! Hey. Why is he coming in here? Better question, why was he lingering just outside the door? Even better question, why was the testicle examination room door wide the f*** open? <laughs> What's she so f***ing impressed by? She's obviously seen this at least twice before. Movie joins Boogie Nights in perpetuating the myth that Mark Wahlberg has a giant dick. You wanna break the record? I gotta oh, break the record. Kid came to play! Wait, why is he encouraging Dusty to produce an exorbitant amount of semen? I know this is an unconventional doctor and but is there a reason for this, besides getting in yet another lazy bodily fluid joke? Daddy's home treads boldly into territory already charted by a dozen better comedies, jerking off at the fertility clinic. I bet the pitch for this movie was literally Will Ferrell jerks off at a clinic, oh, and Marky Mark has a huge penis. Jesus, tap dancing Christ, this is some of the laziest comedy writing since Hangover 3. How difficult would it be for someone to whip up a batch of your Cinnabons? Between the dialogue and the computer screen, this scene just earned the coveted Jeremy Gives You the Middle Finger Award for its sheer selloutness. Also, Brad loves that classic Nevermind photo so much that he's also got it in his office. Dylan, you were created right down that wall, buddy. The Great Wall of China is way too f***ing touristy and overvisited for this sex act to have happened. All right, you guys, let's um get ready for bed. Not only are the blinds wide the f*** open after dark, apparently these windows don't hold sound in for shit. I wrote several sins about all the bullshit in this kid's bedroom and deleted them all. Laker jokes, despite this movie being set in New Orleans, shared bedroom jokes, Spider-Man space shuttle jokes, but ultimately, this kid's bedroom is mostly guilty of being too busy. It's an orgy of evidence that someone staged this room. this room. Absolutely zero reason Marky would be allowed or invited to attend the results of Will's fertility test, but hey, comedy, am I right? He's got a fighting chance of getting you pregnant. God damn it, I don't care how good this doctor is, shut the fucking door! pee outside the room that Dusty sleeps in. He's gonna smell your urine. Somehow Thomas Hayden Church found an even more sexist character to play than his role in Sideways. Come on, five it! No, you know... Get on this. I'd really rather not. It's at this point that you realize this script is running on fumes and relying on overlong jokes to drag itself to feature length. Clean slate? Absolutely. And it's at this point that you may be wondering why this video doesn't have more sins. Well, I'll tell you why. It's like this, that's so aggressively average that makes the movie neither overly offensive nor enjoyable at all. So, because it wouldn't be much fun to hear me say, boy, this sure is average 30 times, I'll just go ahead and add 30 cents. I mean, I'm here to defeat you and take back my family, and that can't change. But now I'll follow your noble example. Do it above board. Honestly. I mean, has Dusty had a life-altering change of heart that we weren't informed about? Obviously, he not only left Sarah with the kids, but they also went through the process of a full divorce. So I guess the only reason he's back in the picture is to spite Brad, which is a pretty f***ing stupid reason for this movie to exist. Once again, they still haven't fixed this f***ing SUV, and this house is so small that two children have to share a bedroom. Just can't belabor that shit enough, folks. Not one present from Dusty! Hey kids, let's let's don't forget who got you a dog! This movie's creator saw stepbrothers and said, why not stepfathers? And then copy-pasted this shit into existence. Hey, Tumor, quit huffing this squaws! Oh yeah, remember the dog that's only been on screen for one or two random sight gags? Yep, he's still around. <laughs> 
Modern comedy gives the finger to time and logic, and how Brad would ever have had time to set all this shit up, because the laugh is the extremeness of the scene, right? Tickets to tonight's NBA playoff game! What? Against Dylan's favorite team, the Los Angeles Lakers! Man, considering the Lakers went 21 and 61 in 2015, this is really stretching the boundaries of reality. Why the hell did Brad get Dusty a ticket to the basketball game? Even if he were rubbing his face in the generosity, that's a completely unnecessary expense, and it provides an opportunity for Dusty to upstage him. You should sit in your $18,000 seats and think of all the better ways that your family could have used that money. Well, look who finally woke up and started paying attention to and acting sensibly. Where have you been the entire movie, lady? Here's Pelican's young star, Anthony whatever his name is, acting like he's made the NBA playoffs. And it's just as hilarious to me as this movie acting like it takes place in New Orleans. Dude, I know the Pelicans aren't a hugely popular NBA team, but this is the playoffs for f**k's sake. Look at how many empty seats there are. Last night, while you were sleeping, I made love to our wife. Brad's character will now briefly be played by Frank the Tank. Shit my wiener out of my pants. This terrible and unfunny line is still better than the entirety of Semi-Bro. I'm just saying. Look, I know he got drunk and kicked out of the game, but he's f**king leaving the house? Even if Sarah is super pissed at him, how's this gonna help things? She brought up how much the game tickets cost, but now she's banishing him to potentially waste more money on a hotel? Movie tries to wring one more joke out of the smashed SUV, but that was way too wrecked to be open for baggage storage now. The entire family gathers around to watch Brad take the walk of shame to really ensure the knife was twisted at the end of the scene. Hey, you're not staying here. He's been here all f***ing week, but now she's kicking him out? God damn it, it's not Linda Cardellini's fault, but this character sucks. F*** you, movie. You can't show me day by day escalating and then suddenly go dark for four days? What the fuck? What's with the blankets and the hot plate and the B.O.? I crapped in the wastebasket. I'm so bored with this movie that I'm actually relieved to have a poop reference to write about. Also, even if Brad is living at the office, don't they have bathrooms? I know he's depressed, but he's not fucking feral. You cannot say Oriental. His name is you or Wu. Could have been Javier. That's so racist, it's almost government approved. Dusty came by the bar earlier. He was talking about how he can't do the daddy thing. The f*** is Griff doing here? He drove all the way out to Brad's office to tell him Dusty might be planning on skipping town? Has this character shown any interest in this family other than squatting in their house? WAIT! Wait, this school's prom spent $110,000 on light bulbs. Wait, this is the father-daughter dance, right? So why is the brother here? And if Brad were planning on taking his daughter, why didn't he first go to the house and take her? It's little things like this that make this movie not only boring, but boringly annoying. Dusty. Brad not only thought immediately to look in the airport, but he was also able to get through security, find the right terminal, and locate the correct bar at the exact time Dusty was there. I wanted to prove that I was a good dad too, but I'm not, okay? Primary antagonist becomes a sympathetic character in about 30 seconds cliche. No, no, you gotta come. I can't see Sarah after what I said. So how long is Brad planning to be gone then? Jesus, if I had to leave the house for four days after every time I got too drunk, I'd never see my bed. After the vile shit this movie has shown me, even the establishing shots of the daddy-daughter dance are uncomfortable. No way, man. The slow motion treatment is for a hero coming in to save the f***ing day. These assholes were totally gonna miss this dance, and they're super f***ing late, so f*** this walk up. Now you take the first one, you've earned it more than I have. Dusty, please, she's your daughter. Uh, what the hell did I miss? Great question, considering this conversation took place less than four minutes ago. Why are you even here at the daddy-daughter dance? This evil fourth grader would be excellent at cinema sins. Finale dance-off intended to make me smile actually makes me rage. Do you even realize how many ponies and sparrows and flowers I trampled on my way here to narrate this sin? The fact that Brad's inspired to take his shirt off during a dance-off at a daddy-daughter dance should immediately disqualify him from Dad of the Year contention. So I guess everyone just forgot about the brazen assault by both the child and the parent of the other child that just happened a few minutes ago? Yes? Okay, whatever moves us along to the end of this f***ing slog. Movie sets itself up for a sequel featuring John Cena as the primary villain, only to pretty much abandon it in order to further facilitate Mel Gibson's comeback. You do not talk to me oh, like that! that bitch. I drive a Dodge Stratus! Oh, listen, I gotta leave early today. I gotta go pick up my wife's ex at the airport. You need to get your joint worked on, okay. Miles. Jack. Help me, Jesus! Help me, Jewish God! Help me, Tom Cruise! Dusty! Hey. Jack says you got a great big cock. Oh, I don't know. I guess so. May I see it? Really? Please. And you can tell Rolling Stone magazine that my last words were, I'm on drugs. You got the touch. You got the power. Put it together. What are you doing? Dance off, bro. Me and you. Hey, it's okay, Brad. Look, she's a lot of bike, man. And will you, for the love of God, put on a f***ing shirt? Panda, panda, panda. I got broads in Atlanta. She wants another baby.
dead, Brad, all right? I want their parents dead. I want this kid in my life. This is the most public yet of my many humiliations.